In this video, 10 most useful studio gadget you should definitely get. Let's get to it. Welcome back to Mixbus TV, folks. Hope you're having a great day. If you like the channel, please hit the subscribe button, the bell icon, comment, share, all that. But let's get to the video. 10 very useful gadgets you should definitely get. We'll keep this list under 100 bucks. Number one, Abtec Hum X. Have you ever had problems with your guitar amp or your other gear buzzing because of ground problems? This little thing will solve the problem. Without doing anything dangerous like ground lift, this little gadget will in most cases completely solve your ground issues or at least reduce them so much that it won't be a problem anymore. You can use this one with any units up to 720 watts, but only with one unit at the time. Don't plug multi cords in it. This is for me a must have in every studio. It also comes in rack form with eight, I think, outlets, but usually one is sufficient for home studio or project studio because usually the amps, the guitar amps or bass amps are a problem there. And you can start with one and then if you need, you can buy more. I can vouch personally for this one because I tried it, I used it. I don't know about other brands. I know there are cheaper options out there, but something like this, you plug very expensive gear on it. You don't want to skimp on it. So Abtec Hum X is number one. Number two, I had two of these in my studio in Europe. Belkin remote controlled power strip. This thing is pretty amazing. You saw me probably using it in previous video from my studio in Europe. They are pretty amazing and very useful. On top of being a power surge protector, you have eight outlets. Two of them are always on and six of them are remote controlled with a big switch remote. It's great because you can plug any kind of gear and turn it on and off with the remote but it's very useful for all those units in studio specifically that have the on off switch on the back like monitors hardware gear with this one you don't have to reach behind the unit or even worse behind the rack you can plug them all in and turn them on with the remote in my old studio i had two i plugged on one all my monitors so uh, two sets of speakers plus the sub so I could turn my monitoring system on with the remote without reaching behind the monitors behind the desk. And on the other one, I plugged my rack mount power strip. And on the power strip, I plugged all the rack gear that I had on my desk that had the on off switch on the back. And this way is super safe because you turn on the Belkin first, giving the power to the power strips, and then you switch the power strip on which switch on all your gear. And it's super safe for monitors too because the Belkin itself has a soft on and off. So even when I was turning my monitors on, there was no pop, no noises, no problem ever. Again, I can vouch for this specific model, which I'm gonna link down below as all the gadgets we'll see in this video. I don't know about any other option. I don't know about cheaper options. This one worked for me, never had a problem. Number three, another essential, the Furman. M8X2. This is an eight outlet power conditioner, it is rack mount. Furman is of course the go-to for all power distribution in studio. If you wanna rack mount your power conditioner and most important, have surge protection for all your gear, computer and monitors, this is the unit that you need. They offer the basic unit, the M8X2, which has eight outlets on the back and one in the front always useful and they also have another version we pull out lights for a little more i personally never use the lights so i will get this one but that's available Furman now also makes another power conditioner not in rack form but in usual power conditioner form a multi-cord the ss6b if you don't want to rack mount uh, your power conditioner you can keep this one on the floor and it still has the emi rfi noise attenuation built in and a power surge protector number four this might gonna sound strange but it's actually very useful is the i defender 3.0 external usb ground loop eliminator the full factory description has some bullshit marketing lines in it uh, like increasing dynamic contrast and warmth and resolution in your music that will never happen but what will happen if you have ground problems in your usb ports that will solve it. Even if you're using a powered USB hub, there can be noise uh, coming from the USB ports, especially if you plug your USB audio interface in it. It's very common on laptop, but very common on PC towers as well, because maybe the motherboard or the ports, something touches the chassis and creates an internal ground loop, and then you have the noise on your USB ports. This little thing can solve 90% of those kind of problems, so give it a try. Number five, Behringer CT100 cable tester. 
For less than 30 bucks, you should always have a simple cable tester in your studio. Behringer gets a lot of heat, but I had several of these and they never failed on me and they always got the job done. It requires no power. It's a very simple unit. There's not much to say here, but this will save you a lot of time and headache if you have any cable problem and you don't know which cable, what is not working. It works with my cable, so XLR, quarter inch mini jacks. It tests also for phase. Some cables have phase inverted. They come like that or they've been rewired like that. It has a test tone, ground shield. All you need to test any cable in your studio is always good to have one. Number six, radial passive and active reamp. Pick your poison. Personally, I like passive reamps better, but because of my setup, you might prefer the active version. The active version has some more options like split signal and polarity switch, and well, is active. Uh, I personally, like I said, prefer the passive one. I find they are more transparent, but both will get the job done. Uh, whatever you pick to have a reamp box is always a good idea, not just to reamp guitars, but to run any line level signal into pedals, amplifiers, whatever, any track from your DAW, like you see me doing in my mixes for uh, vocals, bass, synths, snare, reamp it through either guitar pedals and then back in, multi-effects, guitar amps. So it's a very useful tool to have, always advised to keep a reamp box on hand. Number seven, a USB microphone. It doesn't matter what your setup is, a professional studio, a project studio, a home studio, I think in this era, it's a very good idea to keep a decent quality USB mic on hand because you never know what is gonna happen. You have a client there, maybe the power goes down, you have a problem with your main uh, multi-channel preamp or your desktop computer doesn't start, whatever is gonna be the problem with a laptop and a good USB mic, you can get the recording done. Not just vocals and acoustic instruments, even a guitar amp, if the mic is good. You can use it for emergency recording on the road. I think it's a good idea to keep a USB mic because they are so cheap and the quality is actually decent. There are so many models out there, so I am personally going to link and vouch for two that I know. One is the Audio-Technica 2020 USB and the other one is the Rode NT USB. Both will get the job done. The Rode has some more feature on board and it sounds good. Number eight, powered USB hub. This is a given and probably most of you have at least one already, but I personally had several problems in the past with USB hub. I finally found a good one that is cheap. It has enough ports and most important is reliable. Didn't give me any problem and I have something like 20 plus USB ports. It's the Anchor powered USB hub. It comes with either three fast charging ports or one. All the ports are USB 3.0 and depending on if you're using more data port or charging port, you wanna pick one or the other. Personally, I think in studio you need more data port, but up to you. I will link both models down below. Number nine, microphone isolation shield. Things like this can make a big difference in home recording, emergency recording, hotel recording, any non-ideal environment. And it gets used in professional studios too as well, not just for vocals, but for isolating, for example, cabinets for guitars and bass and stuff like that. It won't solve all the problems of recording in a non-ideal environment, but especially for vocals, it will bring them down significantly, especially if your room is not that big. You don't really need anything fancy for this. Monoprice has one for just over 60 bucks that has a mic stand, a metal plate, and a decent size. You can't go wrong with it. Number 10, I left the best for last. Something we all need, a vacuum tube USB drive. There you go. But if you're like me and you will break this one the second you have it, I also found a desktop version so you have less chances to break it. And it looks cool. I'm kidding, of course, the real number 10 is something I got from my laptop right when I got my laptop, and it's pretty great. A USB-C hub adapter turns your one USB-C port into a multi-port. There are many, but I found this one to be the best. It's got an aux input, SD card reader, HDMI that supports 4K, three USB port 3.0, VGA and LAN. And if you plug it into a wall socket, it delivers USB-C power which is something you're gonna miss when you're using other types of adapters like this. 
The others will give you the ports, but they will take away the USB-C power. This one won't. I got this one for myself. It works really well, especially if you are using a lot of peripheral on your laptop. And this was my top 10 most useful gadgets you can get in your studio. Let me know in the comment down below what your favorite gadgets are, and maybe we'll do another video with your suggestions, guys. I hope this video was useful. I hope you liked it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment, share, all that. Follow Mixbus TV on Facebook and Instagram for exclusive content content and a lot of news about new videos and new courses. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.